Hey guys, welcome back to Nintendo Treehouse Live at E3. Uh, Indie Day rolls on. We are here with, uh, I've got Kirk from Nintendo of America, publisher and developer relations, and our very special guests, we have Harry and Gary, designers from oh, yeah. Play Hi. Playtonic, to show us some ukulele and the impossible lair. That is absolutely right, yeah. Thank you so much for having us here today. Yeah, you bet. Uh, so yeah, so let's just jump straight in. Ukulele and the impossible lair. <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> You can lay it back on a brand new adventure, and as you can see, this time it's a, a 2D platform game rather than a 3D, which the original one was. Awesome. Andy, the story is that Capital B, the corporate evil overlord, he's, he's back and up to his old tricks, and um, he's taken over the Kingdom of the Bees, which is called the Royal Stingdom, using a mind control device called the Hive Mind. And Queen Phoebe, there's there's an awful lot of bee puns in this, so you just have to kind of bear with me and like <laughs> roll with it. So wait, bear with me. That's also kind of you. Really. I see what you're doing. <laughs> just be yourself. Uh, very good. Yeah. Let's yeah. see how many we can fit in here. There you go. But yeah. Um, so Queen Phoebe, she's uh, she's not too happy about that, and she's she's enlisted the help of Yuka and Laylee to uh, get involved and take down Capital B and save the day. Now. The game's called Ukulele Impossible, Ukulele in the Impossible Lair because not only has Capital B sort of taken over the Bee Kingdom, he's he's also built himself a brand new lair. And this is actually one of the levels of the game, and he's calling it the Impossible Lair. Because it's basically designed to destroy anyone who dares go into, into it. And in fact, he's he's so convinced in the impossibility of this lair that he's actually just left the front door wide open. And from the very beginning of the game, you and Laylee can actually go straight into the impossible lair and take it down. And, and actually, that's, that's all you need to do. To finish the game, you just need to take down, the, the go through the impossible lair and take down capital B. But there is a problem. That's so simple. Yeah, it's, it's, it's called the impossible lair for a reason, because it is by far the most difficult level in the game. It's about four times longer than any other level. Wow. Um, it's got pretty much every enemy and every hazard from the entire game just like crammed into one space, all organized in a way that's really designed to just completely destroy you. Um, and there are no checkpoints. So, so you can give it a shot if yeah. you're confident in your ability to somehow know you everything can. you need to know without yeah. actually having learned it yet. Yeah, and if you've got <laughs> the skills, like, like, I mean, how, so, but the thing is though, with that being the only thing you've got to do is finish the game, how, how do you finish the game? So, one option is like get good, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. And and that <laughs> and that's an option. And you know that's something we think some people are going to do. They're just going to be like, yeah, okay, I'm going to keep going through this until yeah. I can beat this layer. But for sort of <laughs> people like me, at least, <laughs> if you don't want to sort of destroy your TV and your console. Um, there is, thankfully, another way of getting through this lair, and actually that's why you can lay there going on this adventure, um, because at the end of every single level, there is a bee that's been imprisoned. Okay. But these are no ordinary bees. These are members of Queen Phoebe's royal guard, the bee Italian, and they're basically the most awesome bees in the entire uh, bee kingdom, and when you free them, they'll actually go with you, Queen Lady, into the impossible lair and help you out. And, and the way in which they help you out is that every bee will take one hit on behalf of you, Queen Lady. They'll kind of just dive on the grenade and to help you get through it. And so, as you can imagine, the more levels you complete, the more bees you get, the more bees you get, the more hits you can take. And the more hits you can take, the more possible the impossible lair becomes. I like it. Uh -huh. and, and that is kind of the, the general overview of the game and why it's called Ukulele and the Impossible Lair. So if I collect five bees, I yeah. can take five hits. Exactly, yeah. That's Got right. it, okay. And they'll take any kind of hit as well. So if you kind of get you know blown up by something, that'll knock one of them out who fall to the floor. But also if you fall to your death down a death drop, like one of the guys will sort of grab you and like pull you up and sort of drop you on the side and, and then they'll pass out because you know he's putting a lot of work very there. Very tired, yeah. very tired, yeah. So, they, so they're, they're really useful, um, and there's a total of 48 that you can get, so eventually, you know, if you play through enough levels, you will get a lot more chances. And that makes the impossible layer actually possible Absolutely, with yeah. 48 hits. With 48 hits. That's what we hope, anyway. Cool. <laughs> so let's talk a little bit about the development process yeah. and your role in the development. Yeah, um, sure. For the fans, I'm pr pretty sure they want to know exactly what you do. Yeah, yeah, totally. So Gary and I are both designers, and okay. I've kind of, one of the major things I've been looking at is the gameplay mechanics, which is just like the general handling of Yuka and Lady, the moveset, and all that kind of stuff. Right. Um, and so my role is kind of just making it just feel super, super smooth to play. And like the word we've been using in development of this game to describe the mechanics is fluid. Like nice. we just want it to feel like really silky smooth. And and it's kind of really interesting when you watch a, a beginner playing this game. They kind of sort of walk through the game and stop and jump on an enemy. But 
the better you get at the game, you kind of find that people start to gradually glide through the levels and they start chaining moves together and boosting through. And so you can really see there's a big difference between uh, an advanced player and a beginning player. And the advanced players just end up looking that much more cool. They just like just smoothly go through the game, getting this state, this state of flow. It's, uh, it's it's really cool. So see, I've done gameplay mechanics, and Gary's just done tons of the levels. In fact, uh -huh. he's done all the levels that we're playing. So you know, he's he's gonna he's gonna <laughs> ace them, and it's gonna be no problem. Yeah. So talk to us about this area we're now. This looks a little different than we were, when where we just were. Yeah, yeah, you're right. So so this is one of the things we're really excited about this game. It's like a, a major addition to to the game. It's called the Overworld, and. Um, you know, I, I would completely understand if you like immediately looked at this and thought, okay, you know, it's, it's a, a nice looking map screen, that's cool, go from level to level. But actually, we've put so much into the overworld and it's, it's so much more than that. And we've been describing it as a, a mini adventure game okay. in its own right, because there's just so much stuff to see and do in here. So, you know, you've got all sorts of really varied locations to visit. There's tons of characters to meet and interact with. They've got all problems they need solving. There's loads of puzzles, which you kind of see as we go through. There's tons of puzzles to sort of get through. And there's loads of secrets. And it's just, it's just a really nice place to kind of hang out in between levels. And it's also a really great place to kind of get a bunch of that ukulele charm because, you know, we really wanted the game to have the characters that people love from the previous game come back and new characters as well. And they don't really make sense in a 2D level. You're kind of focusing on getting through the level. You don't want to stop right. and, like, talk to people all the time. So it's a really nice place to just sort of just chill out and hang out with all the characters. Yeah, well, that's a different cool. pace, a different vibe. It's, yeah, yeah, I like exactly. how it mixes up between that fluid sort of fast moving. Yeah one point to another gameplay and just kind of getting to chill out. Exactly, and we find that we find that it really kind of complements the 2D levels quite nicely because, you know, when you're playing a 2D platformer, you're doing like level, 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 and eventually your like, heart's going and the adrenaline's <laughs> like, and you're like, okay, you know, I just need to like, take a step back now and calm down. And the overworld really represents that kind of, you know, go and get a cup of tea and just, and just like, just have a look. I kind of use the word potter, just like, you know, yes. have a little potter around the overworld, just <laughs> like, you know, what's through this passageway, can I get up there? It's a really nice place to just explore and have a bit of downtime and just chill out. I, I like look that. at Potter. it. I'm going to use that too. Yeah. Pot you can't poodle. say it like he can. Poodle. poodle is another word I like to poodle. use. <laughs> I look at it as an opportunity to hand the controller to one of my kids. Yeah, absolutely. Right? Just yeah. kind of say, oh, okay. Yeah. Here, try this, and yeah. you can just kind of mess around in the overworld. That's it. I'm like, go and find all the secrets for me. Sure. Um, I'm going <laughs> to have to lay down. So it looks like I see a challenge level hit, uh, Gary just entered. What's what's going on there? Yeah, that's right. So that was a pagey. And in the original game, pages expanded the size of the levels. In this game, pages do something slightly different. So they, they offer you a little challenge. And as you can see, it's just a single screen, very brief challenge that sort of... Oh, he won. He's a pro. Wow, does yeah. he work on your team? He, he designed he it. He knew oh, how it worked. I think so. <laughs> <laughs> to just sneak well, I've never it. played it Good. before. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so Gary completed that challenge. And like I said, the challenge is kind of really simple little challenges. They kind of test your ability with like a gameplay mechanic. So that one's about rolling, for example. Oh, we should just appreciate this moment, sorry. Pagey power. Yeah. Oh, ooh, cool. Now let's, I mean, the visuals in this are just stunning. Yeah. The colors and the way everything comes together and the depth. I mean, this is definitely a level up for you guys. In this yeah, ab absolutely. I mean, I really think our art team have surpassed themselves in this in this in this game. It's amazing. It, does, it does look beautiful, and and the music as well. Um, being lead being led by um, Dave Wise and Grant Kirko, we've oh. got some some Legends. absolutely beautiful so tunes in the game. Yeah, and I think we're actually going to hop to. So uh, we're going to move on from the over overworld and hop over to a, a different one, yeah. level, I believe. That's right. Yeah. So this is this is going to be level three. Here we go. Right, cool. Yeah, level three. So, moved a bit further through the game now and uh, get a bit more challenging. And obviously, you can see we're introducing new enemies. So we've got spiders, a few new mechanics, stuff like ropes and whatever. But one of the main things oh, you wow. kind of notice here is like the level is very different looking to the original. And that's one of the key things that we were aiming to achieve with this game. We wanted a real variety of locations. So no, no two levels really share that much. We we really wanted to explore all sorts of places that could be in this bee kingdom. So we've got town. We've got uh, forest here, we've got factory, we've even got like a, a zeppelin in the sky. There's like so many different crazy locations that players are going to be visiting and hopefully sort of really enjoying exploring this bee kingdom. That's so cool and I love how the save point kind of scans your body. Yeah, that's it. And it kind of gives you an imprint of your body as you yeah, go through that's it. Right. That's really neat. And of course he's got eyes because... Of course. Eyes. Could you talk a little bit too about our heroes, Yuka? It's Yuka and Lele. That's and, right, yeah. Uh, sort of how they have a relationship that goes beyond just hanging out together as yeah. a level. Yeah, well, they're best friends. So, yeah, for people who don't know Yuka Lele, um, Yuka, he's the uh, green chameleon and Lele, she's the purple bat and she's kind of a bit sassy and he's a bit more chilled out and, um, yeah, kind of 
Individually, they're pretty legit heroes anyway. I think we could have probably made a reasonable game by either one of them, but together they kind of form this unstoppable team, which is ukulele. And, and hopefully that's kind of encapsulated in the way the game plays as well. Like if you look at the way the moves are set up, it's, it's all about teamwork. You know, you can see that when Yuka jumps and Laylee spins, it's all about Yuka doing something that Laylee contributes to, and they, and they really are sort of better together. But you could actually you could actually lose one of them, and then that's absolutely right. Yeah, yeah, that's true. So we don't have a, a health system or a life system in this game. If if you take a hit, um, what happens is that Laylee is knocked from Yuka's shoulders, and she kind of flies around the, the place where you took the damage, and in a bit of a daze because you know she's just been hit, and right. and you've got a small window of time in which to catch her. And and if you catch her, you know that's cool. You can carry on the adventure, no problems. But if you don't catch her, she'll actually oh, oh Gary. Looks Gar like Gary got a little greedy <laughs> there. Exactly, yeah. And, and you know, Gary made this level, so... Yeah, ah, Come the on, level Gary. designer tries to... <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, if you... Sorry, if you... Um, if you lose lately, then you've got to continue on your own as Yuka. And what you find is that, actually, it's, the game becomes that bit more challenging, because, firstly, if you take another hit, you're going to die. And secondly you lose a bunch of the abilities that you've become reliant on. So the twirl jump that Gary's doing there, there's a ground pound move, and there's a boosted version of the roll. Those three moves just go away with Laylee. She sort of flies off with them. Ah, oh, okay. And, and so, so it enhances your move set. Yeah, Laylee does. If you have both of them together. Exactly, but when you lose her, you're kind of down to just Yuka. You become a little stiff. That's it. And the, you, you really find you become a lot more tense. And like when the platforming sections come up, you sort of palms still get a bit well, sweaty. One of those moves you mentioned, like the like the flutter jump. The like that that a flutter jump will always kind of get you out of trouble. Can it make those? You can make that adjustment you need when exactly. you don't nail the jump, and suddenly exactly. you don't have that. Exactly. So. And sometimes you forget as well. And so you'll just be going through, and you're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Press the button to oh, hang on. <laughs> right. <laughs> <She's gone. laughs> yeah. I love the 3D nature of this, while the characters come into the screen. Yeah, yeah. It's um, really fun when a character dies and just flies by really the camera. It's really cool looking. All the secrets um, in the game as well are kind of slightly telegraphed using that sort of two and a half D perspective. So okay. we have we have walls that, that that fake walls. Right. And you can just, if you're careful, if you're observing, you can just see that there's actually a room behind a it. Bit past it, right? Yeah. So you kind of keep your eyes peeled. There's there's a lot of like hidden areas within the levels themselves, and um, you know if, if, you, if you keep your eyes peeled, you can. Uh, you can oh look, he made the level. Like we've got another uh, member of our level. Yeah, we've got another member of our battalion. I think we've rescued. That's here. right. Yeah, we have. So, was a Khan. Some of them have got some very strange names. So now we can take two hits, one hit in the impossible lair, mm -hmm. or is it two? It's Do we two. have two bees we've now? We've got two okay. bees now, so we can take two hits, and then of course you've got the sort of generally taking a hit with Yuka, and she flies away. And, uh, lately, she flies away and catch her back. Have you actually seen someone defeat the impossible layer the first time you I have? I have, yeah. We can confirm it is possible. It's the impossible layer is possible. <laughs> yeah, without exactly. taking yeah, so a hit. Capital B says it's impossible, but Platonic says no, it has to be possible. Okay. There's no way we were gonna make a level that was like actually impossible. Right. I don't so, think that'd be so much fun. So where is that layer? I'm see we're sort of seeing like a almost like a mini map. Yeah, that's right. So 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 this is where the layer was. It's just up here. So it's actually just to the north of level one. So we started just south of there, that's level one. And you can see just north of there. That's the impossible layer. We've we've had one attempt already today, as you can see from the from the UI, and we got 0% of the way through. So right. pretty pleased with this that. This map is beautiful. I like how the trees are sort of. They almost kind of look like that uh, classic sort of pixel art. Yeah, yeah. And and it gives you a sense of how big the overworld is as yeah, well. Yeah, huge. We just quickly hop back to it, and we can zoom out of the map. You can just see how big oh, wow. the overworld actually is. So it's like it's a really sizable experience, and there's like like I said, it's just full of stuff to see and do, and tons of secrets. Uh, so yeah. Right, and, and you know, you, earlier you were talking about when we were off to the side, you were talking about some of the levels and how they have different dimensions to them. Yes, yes. So, well, let's have a look at that then. So, we're going to solve one of the overworld puzzles, and as a result of doing that, we'll kind of trigger something quite special to happen, and we'll kind of talk about that. So, this this is what we're going to do now. Guys, you can do the slightly, slightly more involved puzzle in the overworld. So, the first one, it was it was more straightforward. This is a bit later in the game, so we're going to going to go ahead. You can see he spent some quills to open that to open that cage. So quills are really the currency of Yuka and Laylee, and they're, they're using the overworld right. for things like opening cages, but there's also a shop that sells some pretty cool stuff that you know, we're not talking about today, but hopefully people are going to really like the stuff that you can get in the overworld and you know, take them back into oh, the 2D neat. levels. There's like a lot of back and forth between the overworld and the 2D levels, and, and we're really keen to ensure that it felt like one cohesive experience rather than two disparate ones, so there's constantly back and forth between the overworld and the 2D levels. 
So that's great. He killed the five enemies. He's got himself another another key. I love how he holds the key in his mouth and yeah, gets it with his tongue. I know. It's pretty grim. It's not particularly hygienic, I don't think. No. <laughs> it's brass, maybe. Brass, I think, is yeah, it's pretty hygienic. clean. Oh, yeah. well, okay. That's good. <laughs> you guys have pulled out all the stops here with the detail. It's great. Yeah, yeah. So this guy here, you can see this is a character as well. He's called Rampo. Now, we could sit and chat with him, but I don't think we've got time to... He goes on a bit, so... Um, <laughs> <laughs> but we could sit and chat with him, and he's actually a returning character. So he was a boss from the previous game. And um, something... Can't pick the key up. <laughs> can't pick the key up. <laughs> this is a really difficult puzzle because Gary can't pick the key up. You have an impossible layer and an impossible puzzle. An impossible yeah. game. Yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> So we, we may have to cheat somewhat uh, with this puzzle. Um, just going to... Imagine I've got the key. I'm yep. now He's through uh -huh. the door. Through the door. <laughs> yes. Okay, good. And then there's an area here that we kind of want to get through. You can see there's these like, things that need to come down. It's like a little bridge, because that's the only way we can get to this key. Uh -huh. um, if we could pick that key up. Well, Fingers crossed. Well, we'll find out. <laughs> we will find out. Live on stream, it's very exciting. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so um, this is another little puzzle you can see marked out on the top of this platform. It actually shows the way you've got to swim underneath. Uh huh. A bit of a hidden, not yeah. hidden thing. Exactly. Pathway. And like you know, all the puzzles in the overworld, it's not working. Like, you know what? We would have loved to show you this puzzle. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. It's Gary and the Impossible Puzzle. It's yeah, right. Gary and the Impossible Puzzle. So. Well, we'll just talk about what would have happened. So <laughs> he would have flicked this switch, this would have come down, he would pick this key up, and we would go this way. I like that swimming, swimming mechanic, too. Yeah, like it's, re it's really fluid, <laughs> yeah. So how long have you been? You guys been working on this? I mean, you obviously started after the first ukulele. Yeah, that's right. So a, a small group of people right after ukulele um, started working on the game. And then gradually, as we finished supporting ukulele, the sort of team started to ramp up and, and, uh, and yeah, and then it's f at the moment now, we've got uh, 30 people at Playtonic. So we're wow. kind of in a really, really good position to sort of take on um, any type of game. And, and so this one's been a, a really, really smooth sort of, you know, nice transition out of Uka 1 and onto this one. And uh, one other thing I've been I've been enjoying in my headphones has been the music of the game. Could you talk a little bit about the music yeah. that we've been hearing? As yeah, we've been absolutely. Hearing? So Dave Wise and Grant Kirkhope they they kind of lead in the music on this game. And you know the number of times I the number of times I come back from from work and just driving home and I just got one of the level songs stuck in my head. And <laughs> or like when a new tune comes out, like when they do a new tune for a level, and I'm like. I'm just like, oh, wow, that's so awesome. And then they'll do an updated version of, oh, man, that's even more awesome. <laughs> so one of the things that I've not spoken about, because unfortunately the impossible puzzle has uh, tripped us up a little bit, um, is that what would have happened there is that Gary would have smashed Rampo's teeth, which is something that happened in the original game. We do it again in this game. Poor Rampo. Poor smashed Rampo. his teeth. And it would have um, made the river flood into the level entrance okay. where we were stood outside. And what that would have done is it would have unlocked the second version of the level, because in Ukulele and the Impossible Air, there are actually two versions of every single level. The original version that you find by default, and then a transformed version of the level that you access as a result of solving a puzzle in the overworld nearby. So that was the puzzle nearby that level entrance that we were solving, and it unlocked the second state. Now, what that would have done in that level, so the original version of that level is like very dry, very barren, all the plants are kind of withered and whatever. And when you flood the level with water, everything gets watered, the whole level is raining, plants grow, there's all sorts of different things. And the transformations of the levels are really, really significant. So the one for this one, this level actually becomes a swimming level. Okay. And the, the, the uh, town that we were in earlier gets completely destroyed. And there's even a level where the first version of the level is like walking horizontally, yeah. and we flip it vertically, and you actually wow. end up climbing the level. So every single level in this game has a transformed version that's significantly different in every respect. You know, there's new artwork, everyone's got new music, new enemies, new structure of the level. It's, it really is completely transforms the game. So although the game has 20 levels in theory, Every level has a second version, so That's in really reality, cool. it's more like there's 40. And, and we, we really hope players are going to enjoy playing the first version of the level and then and then kind of wondering to themselves, I don't know how this is going to change. What's what's the transformed version yeah. going to be? And then, like, we think it's going to be like constantly surprising for them to see. Oh, Sounds okay. like it's going to be you guys have actually made 40 levels. Right? Exactly, yeah. That's, that. that's right? absolutely right. And, and it's, it's another example of how, like, what you do in the 2D levels and the overworld, they're kind of back and forth. So, yeah. you know, you solve a puzzle in the overworld to unlock a new version of the 2D level, and then you're playing that version of the 2D level, get a B, get some get some quills, spend them in the overworld, back into... So that there's constant great. sort of fluid back and forth between these two experiences. So much to do. And there's, yeah. so, much, there's so much just, like, thought and attention to detail in these levels. Like, everything has a purpose. Every, every Even the platforms that fall away, they were tied up with ropes and knots. Like, there's yeah. nothing that's just there 
and doesn't isn't sort of connected to the larger structure, which I love. Yeah, we so wanted they, the place to feel really solid and yeah, really it really does. It feels yeah. like every level is an actual physical th mm. thing. Yeah, totally. This is a this is a great bit. You expect to be going left, and then oh boy, <laughs> like those giant, the, like oh those boy. are very friendly looking giant like saw blades of doom. You know, <laughs> it yeah, still it's looks like it looks like it hurts. Oh, yeah. No. yeah. Ooh, gosh. Oh, Gary. Go for it. Go for it. <laughs> Gary, you're doing a great job yeah. today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's certainly one of the tricky levels you got to take your That's time really cool so what's the bell do it's like another checkpoint so yeah sorry the bell is where you can regain Laylee so if you lose her and you're uh -huh. as you can his own you can get Laylee again uh, using that bell there's so much fans are really gonna love this yeah they, I always said these guys these are called ghost quills uh -huh. and each one sort of represents a bit of a risk reward challenge for players oh cool and so you can see that in triggering this he's he's vomiting quills yes. all over this area and it kind of really pushes you to take risks in order to get a large number of quills and this is this is awesome as well. I just love just oh those guys are so cool looking. Just, what are they called? Them. They're called minions. <laughs> minions. <laughs> it's a word that like when it's written down, <laughs> it's like oh yeah that makes sense. And then you try and say it, and you just feel really weird. Right. <laughs> minions. Minions. Yeah. So we're almost out of time for the segment, but I think we're mm -hmm. going to see one last member of the battalion to be rescued here very shortly. Yeah, Gary's actually. Probably take a little longer. <laughs> Gary's having a great day. But yeah, wow, yeah. Look at that. He's that it now, there's yeah. another one. And he just kind of throws up. Yeah, that's it. And there's, there's actually five different types. So there's five different colors. So he kind of throws them up Whoa. all over the place. There's a green one who sort of zooms off through the level and draws a racing line of quills for your chase. So there's all sorts of different ones that pushes you in different ways to take risks. Whoa. And as you can imagine, if you hadn't triggered him, this bit would be a lot less chaotic. Right. I would have died a long time yeah. ago. It's really funny, like, in the office, you watch people playing the game, and, like, they kind of trigger these ghost quills, and all the quills are kicking off, and then they kill themselves, <laughs> and they keep doing it over and over again, and it's like, you don't need to do this. It's you just quills. Just it, like, right. They're like, I can't, I have to have the right. money. <laughs> Plus, it looks so cool. Yeah. Level is almost there. Okay. Gary's... Gary's no. He's, he's ringing he's the bell. He's, got it. He's, got, he's going for it. He's going alone. Forget Laylee. Oh, he almost. Oh, get the bees. And that's. And he no longer can rely on any of those other. Yes. Nice one. Nice Good job, Gary. Good job. Nailed it. Let's see who we got. Good job. Zingari. This is hey, Gary. You got your, your Zingari. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's, that's your, your, your B. <laughs> Uh, well, Very nice. Uh, Harry and Gary from Platonic, uh, thank you guys so much for this look at uh, Ukulele and the Possible Lair, published by Team 17. Uh, do you guys have any, uh, when, when can we expect to see this game? Uh, it's 2019, so we don't have an exact day, but 2019. So coming later this year, yep. Ukulele and the Impossible Lair. Again, thank you guys uh, from thank Platonic you. for stopping know, by. Thank you for having us. Uh, yeah, yeah. Thank you, Kirk. And stay tuned. Indie Day rolls on. We'll be right back with a look from uh, at Rad. So don't go anywhere.